I mean, guys, worst case scenario for the Jaguars. Like, that's just as bad as it could get for you guys. But the Bengals, they keep their playoff hopes alive. Here are Lyles from Monday Night Football. Honestly, downright the best game of the year from Monday Night. Let's go. They are fired up here in Duval. From the four. ETN on the pitch. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Blitz coming off the edge. Mixon on a screen. And that was well drawn up. Mixon still rumbling. McPherson hits the crossbar, no good. It down to the six. And now Mixon still going. Touchdown, Cincinnati. First down at the 22. Quick throw, Ingram looking for blocks. Getting blocks. And his first touchdown of the year. Is he playing great tonight? Well, he sure is. And when you pay for Earl. Touchdown, Mixon is second of the night. Third down in about a yard and a half. Extra men on the rush. This one floated. Caught by Chase. And he is caught. Touchdown Cincinnati. Cincinnati Bengals. Third down and nine here for Jacksonville. End zone. And caught. Touchdown after the deflection. Parker Washington. From the 25. This is Boyd. That's behind the line of scrimmage. He's looking to throw. And he throws a pick. Intercepted by Josh. Lawrence goes over the top. Touchdown. This is Browning trying to take it in. No nope. Manis. Did not get it. Browning rolling out to his right. He can take it and get it. First down is to go. Inside the 40. Out of bounds near the 30. Good snap. Good hold. Good kick. Good snap. Good hold. The kick is good. Grand third out to his right. Airs it out for Ridley. Flag is down, Ridley. Back. Holding. Offense number 77. That's a 10 yard penalty. Four down. He got it. But a flag flies at the end of the play. Into the locker room to get looked at. He got bent over backwards. Also had his ankle stepped on by Walker Little. They ruled him down by contact. There's the initial point. And with that, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Defend of All. Of course, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the Week 13 Monday Night Football Recap. And the Bengals pulled off the big time upset with a 34-31 overtime thrilling of a win. A thriller of a win against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Of course, this was by far the best. Well, maybe not as good as that Bills game. Well, yeah, probably better than that. Probably the best Monday night game of the year so far. And I would say not even close because again, that for a week one game was pretty crazy. But for the Bengals, they moved to six and six. Of course, what is it called? Um, snapping that three game losing streak. Uh, obviously, Jake Browning was a massive part of that. They've got a big game against the Colts next week at home. They win that. Maybe we're gonna start talking about the playoffs, which would be kind of crazy for them considering the fact. Yeah, still very likely they won't make the playoffs, considering, again, they're a game back, and also they have a really hard schedule, and they're also wearing at, like, 2-6 and six in the conference, something crap like that. Meanwhile, with the Jaguars, can they um, fall to 8-4 and four with their stat, um, with, um, a loss to having a two-game winning streak? But they still, again, have that um, division lead by one game. Uh, but obviously, Trevor Lawrence getting injured is really concerning. Again, they probably will still win the division, but, again, this is a tough loss for the Jags, considering the fact that if they were able to win this game... They would have been the number one seed in the AFC, but they got a game in the Cleveland next week, which will probably be like a 10-3 game in my, um, you know, maybe, maybe not, it could be higher scoring than that, but, no, I know it's going to be 10-3, because the Jags are not going to score any points, uh, or like a blow, we'll see. Either way, though, for the Bengals, Jake Browning was unbelievable, 32-37, 3-4 in touchdown. I'm not going to say he made, like, some, I mean, he made a lot of really good throws, he read the field really well, just ripping through those reads, but... Um, what is it called? Zach Taylor put him in a really good spot in this game, getting really quick reads, getting the ball out quick, making decisive decisions, not having to do too much outside of that. Jamar Chase, of course, had one game throw. We don't talk about that. And Tyler Boyd, 
I don't even know what the hell they were trying to do there. That could be the worst player of the season so far. Um, the running game, again, not very efficient, but it got the job done. Chase Brown, of course, finally broke out. I like what I saw, not in preseason, but coming out of the draft. I'm like, this guy could be legit. I even said he could take over Joe Mixon's spot. I don't know about that, but he finally had a game where I'm like, yeah, this dude does look like finally as advertised. But Joe Mixon had 68 yards and two touchdowns in this game. He was a big part of their win. Jake Browning also had a, of course, that crazy scramble and also at the QB sneak. Uh, Jamar Chase, again, outside the 76-yard touchdown, wasn't super productive. He did get clamped in this game, but he was able to, again, make contested a ton, a ton of really tough catches. And, of course, again, the 76-yard touchdown where he burned um, what is called Tyson Campbell. Joe Mixon, again, over 100 yards with the 49 yards on the um, um, through, through the air on six catches. Tyler Boyd, receiving-wise, was decent. Obviously, T. Higgins had some big catches as well as Tanner Hudson. And Trent Irwin and Mitchell Wilcox and Drew Sample all had catches for first downs and even more for in Trent Irwin's case. Meanwhile, for this defense, DJ Turner, again, playing the slot, did a really good job. And didn't miss any tackles. Chidobe Awuzie on the outside was a little bit inconsistent, but he did have eight total tackles. Logan Wilson did not do a good job at setting the edge and um, containing gaps, but again, had eight total tackles. Jermaine Pratt had 12 tackles. Jordan Mattel had a sack, as well as Sam Hubbard and uh, Trey Anderson, Joseph Osai. So basically, all their edge rushers, which is good to see. For the Jags, though, Trevor Lawrence obviously got hurt 22 of 29, 258, two touchdowns. I think he has a high ankle sprain on his right ankle. I'm, my guess is like two weeks. We'll see, though. Is there any update on him? Uh-huh. All right. High ankle sprain. My guess is that he will all be back in, like, week 16. Or, yeah, probably week 16. But the good news for the Jaguars is they have one of the most underrated players in the league on their team, which sounds crazy, but C.J. Beathard is so, so, so underrated. If you don't know who C.J. Beathard is, he was the 49ers starting quarterback in 2017 and 2018. 2017, um, he was not very good. Um, That's how I'll put it. 2018, he was okay. Uh, he was better than Nick Mullins. 2020, with the um, he was really good with the um, Niners. He went had six touchdowns and went one and one in his two starts. So yeah, CJ Beathard is a guy you want to look out for because again, he can be a viable backup. Like he, he is le like he's legit, legitimately a guy who can make plays. Like can really run an offense. So Jaguars fans, I wouldn't say you can be like completely. I wouldn't say you could be happy because again. TJ Beathard, he can get out to the pocket and make throws, but he ain't going to extend the same way Trevor Lewis will. Again, not going to definitely won't produce at the same level, but TJ Beathard is a very competent backup. Running game, that's got to be a big part of their offense next week. It was not um, too um, prevalent in this one. 45 yards and a touchdown and 4 yards per carry for Travis Etienne Jr., as well as Trevor Lawrence having the QB sneak touchdown as well, as Calvin Ridley and uh, Dearness Johnson not doing anything. Receiving-wise, Evan Ingram finally got his first touchdown of the year, 9 catches, 82 yards overall. Zay Jones had 5 catches for 78 yards. Parker Washington, six catches for 61 yards, and, of course, that touchdown. Travis Etienne Jr., four, four catches for 34 yards. He didn't really do much for me in fantasy. I mean, no, he had a decent game. Not, not crazy. Meanwhile, for this defense, Boy, I say Lucon continues to do his thing with 13 tackles. Devin, Devin Lloyd to do a, do a decent job in coverage. The corners struggled big time this game. Tyson Campbell, I will say, did a much better job in man outside, of course, that touchdown he gave up. So, it was a big touchdown, but outside that, he did a great job. Darius Williams in zone struggled immensely in, term, um, in terms of, like, jumping routes. I think he could have definitely done a better job with that. But he didn't give anything over the top on him. Rayshon Jenkins was not great in terms of leverage at all in this game at se seven tackles. Andre Cisco is not a free safety, and you saw it for sure in this game. Josh Allen had seven tackles, one and a half sacks, and an interception. Though no, he's been absolutely freaking unbelievable this year. Trayvon Walker got like three pressures, which I guess is good. Both kickers on the both teams missed field goals. Again, the Bengals had 500 yards total offense. It's kind of inexcusable, as well as 156 yards on the ground. Uh, both teams had the ball for basically the same amount of time. It was dead even down the stretch. It was just an, a very good game to watch. Five ties, tie um. The most on um, this season, again, team they were on um, five different ties, the most uh, in, the, in this season ever. I um, mean, most this season. That's all I got there, guys. Let's get right into the keys to the game grades. And for Cincy, Jake Browning, two plus touchdowns. I think he, yeah, he, he hit three. What am I saying? Joe Mixon, over 160 on the ground. No, but he had over 100 through, um, through um, what is it called, um, overall, 117, I think, overall, and, or 100, yeah, 117, and, um, obviously, uh, Chase Brown was on, was really good. Uh, Jonathan Williams was actually doing a decent job on Trayvon Walker. He just got beat around the edge sometimes because, again, he's just simply not as good. Or as athletic, to be honest. So, Bengals offense, um, I don't know. I'll probably give you, like, seven pluses. That's the best. Honestly, you could argue all season they've looked. Again, Jamar Chase had a really good game. Again, he made a lot of tough catches. Yards, yards of separation were definitely not his thing in this game. A lot of just, again, possession catches. But when you look at it, Jamar Chase was really good. I think, I think the advanced stats are up. I think they would be up. Let me check. Because I, I think, what was it? Something like that. All right, let's look at it. Um, Here we go. Against, here we go. Okay. He had 110 yak yards and 149 receiving yards. 
So again, that yeah, but most of those like seventy, like sixty-seven yards from that. So you look at it, it wasn't like again he had a lot of good yak yardage plays, but he was making a lot of tough catches for him, which is again really the reason they had that many points. Defensively though, they the um shallow zones um so that Jermaine and Akeem Davis um can do a cleanup um Travis Easton Jr. screens. They did a good job of containing him, but I really think they could have definitely done, done a better job of setting the edge. But the hard shells were really good, of course, with Cam Taylor Britt um not on the inside tail. They actually again he was hurt, but um what is it called DJ Turner the rookie really stepped up for them there. So this Bengals defense again they weren't for, um great by any means, but I'll probably give them a plus. Can, no, honestly. I'll probably give them a, you know, honestly, <laughs> this is tough for me, because I think they did, did a decent job overall. I want to give them an equal sign, because, again, they had a lot of times where, like, you, you just got to be better there. Like, the scheme isn't good, or a guy misses the tackle. Very inconsistent game for them, but, again, they did make some good plays, so I will give them the even sign. Now, let's talk about the Jacks. If the Jaguars, Trevor finding with, um, guys in open space underneath with targets uh, um, on clear over routes, that's basically for, um... Evan Ingram and obviously Travis Eaton Jr. did not have a um Travis Eaton Jr. did not have a 30 yard touchdown, but he did get in the end zone, so I guess that's good. Offensively, Trevor getting hurt wasn't great, but I think they could have been again a little. Okay, they did score enough points, guys. I'll probably give them five, uh, four pluses, honestly. But a couple crucial penalties screwed them. Defensively, though, Darius Williams clocking somebody that definitely didn't happen. Josh Young continues to do his thing. They didn't get a lot of 10 points. He had 34. Um, it was really the fact that again they were physical up front. They just weren't able again at the point of the ball. I won't say ball skills, but again. Point of attack, they just weren't good enough at, again, breaking up passes. Like, again, at the, the at that catch point, they were not good enough there for any of the corners, really, or any linebackers. And in zone, guys just weren't as quick to the football. So, that, like, again, tackling-wise. So, as long as the Jacks defense, guys, I'll probably give them, I don't know, five minuses. It was, it was just that. That was just simple about it. They were not good enough when it came to the catch point. Um, what it's called, to attacking the catch point. So, Five minuses for the Jacks defense. That's all I got for the Week 13 Monday Night Football Recap. See you guys tomorrow for the Week 14 NFL Power Rankings. And, yeah, hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed the recap. And, yeah, see you for that tomorrow. And late, same foot, same shoulder, and almost oh. knocked his helmet flat out. Oh. That is a three-pancaker, and that is nasty. You've got to love it. Oh, oh my goodness. Hey.